Football fans and welcome to Husky Stadium. Tonight is homecoming and we welcome the players, families, and fans from Spring Lake Park. As a high school within the Anoka Hennepin School District, tonight's athletic event is following the rules and regulations of the Minnesota State High School League. As team captains, we support and lead the expectations of good sportsmanship. We ask everyone to show respect and sportsmanship to both teams and our officials throughout the game. Please refrain from any negative or unsportsmanlike behaviors. Let's make tonight's game a great experience for all players and students from both schools. Thank you for your support and enjoy the game. You look if you win. Coming your way tonight, it's homecoming at Andover High School as the Huskies play host to the Spring Lake Park Panthers and uh, Joe Ruland along with Jim Childs and Jim. It's been a while since these two teams have met. Yeah, it's it's been since the state tournament in 2016. Both teams met. It was a one point victory for Saint uh, for for uh, Spring Lake Park. They've met three times in the playoffs, all one point victories. Hopefully tonight we'll see a, a, a good strong effort by the defense, uh, but uh, it should be a good matchup tonight. Hey, and we had a chance to see a, a Spring Lake Park team has had some trouble holding on to the ball, so turnovers could be a component tonight to watch out for. Yeah, they, they have. Last week, they, they stayed with Rodgers. Rodgers, uh, uh, it was 13-13 into the last minute. Rodgers scores on the last minute. No turnovers last week until the final drive for Spring Lake Park. They can be in this game, Joe, if they keep the ball to themselves and they value the possession of the football. We're moments away from hitting the switch tonight as the Andover Huskies taking on Spring Lake Park Panthers. Must see TV on QCTV moments away. This to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Scores out of the flex. Yes. The Andover Huskies win their first state championship. Welcome tonight to the Andover High School as the Huskies taking on the Panthers from St. from uh, 
Spring Lake Park, and uh, Jim should be a good matchup. Yeah, and you had a chance to talk with the coach ahead of time. Let's uh, let's hear what uh, Tom DeVellis had to say about tonight's Marriott matchup. Before kickoff with head coach Tom DeVellis of the Andover Huskies and coach, uh, three and one start tonight. Another venue, Spring Lake Park Panthers, a team that likes to run. Some similarities with Elk River, but yeah, a little different. Yeah, they're a veer option team, right? So we talked to our kids about being disciplined, just like last week. Um, you know, so they they want to have a guy to make us account for them all the time, and so we got to be disciplined. We got to be gap sound and do our parts tonight. Not to live in the past, but last week's win had to kind of be a lift, and uh, you certainly uh, sweat your butt off. Great hustle, great effort, great game up and down. Yeah, it was exciting for the fans. You know, I think for all of us coaches, it was a little bit of a stress uh, situation, but it's always good to be on the plus side of that. Um, it's good. We talked to our kids about being resilient, and I thought they were very resilient last week. This week, they had a great week of practice with homecoming, all the distractions that go with it. Um, so we hope tonight they're going to come out and have a lot of fun and celebrate homecoming. Speaking of homecoming and the night fans, everybody here, how do you control that adrenaline early on for the kids? Uh, you know, I think part of it is talking about them using it. I think that's one of the things that we talk a lot about is this is a game of emotions. Um, emotions are great as long as they don't get you out of control and get some of the, the penalties that we've had where we have been out of control. Um, but, you know, we talk about having the focus being between the white lines. And like I said, during the week of all the distractions and all that stuff, our kids had fun. They enjoyed their experience of homecoming, um, but they had a great week of practice. Coach DeVellis, good luck tonight. Let's stack another win. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. As you heard, it was the Huskies who did stack a win with an impressive win last weekend, last Friday, against Elk River. That was a, a barn burner. And meanwhile, tonight at Spring Lake Park and the Panthers, similar offenses. Spring Lake Park 2-2 two and two, and over 3-1. and one. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, the two losses, one point, or uh, uh, just a, a couple of, uh, of drives away for uh, the Spring Lake Park. They've, they've got a good chance tonight if they can run the ball. They will have long drives. If they keep if they if they can keep away from fumbling the ball, they will have long drives and it will take uh, the Huskies out of their 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 offensive rhythm. Opening kickoff, Huskies deferred and winning the flip and send it to Spring Lake Park at the five. They do a fake reverse. No, they'll take the reverse in advantage of it. Down the line, nice arm tackle. That'll bring down the Return man specialist there, number 20, 45 there for Spring Lake Park as they get their good look, and that's Lamari Brown, the starting running back tonight. Yeah, Lamari Brown, really a solid running back. Good good tackle by Shea Wazinski uh, on uh, that as he tried, as Brown tried to keep, keep it outside. Brown is, is, is the offense. Brown and Wilkerson are the, instrument, the offense. Uh, the quarterback, number 11, uh, Tyler Wilkinson. It's a veer offense as they split the wideouts, one to the left, one to the right, and Go back to a two-back set at Spring Lake Park again. Two and two going around the end. There's a sophomore quarterback, picks up 15 and forges ahead to near midfield and then beyond for some bonus yards. Big pickup for the sophomore quarterback who comes in with uh, 42 rushes, 174 yards, averaging 58 rushes a game. Yeah, he, uh, he had a big game against Moorhead to open it up. And uh, this one, uh, he opens it up too. Uh, they were able to break contain, and uh, Wilkerson took it for a big game. Had some problems with that last week with Elk River, but then again, who doesn't? Elk River, a great opponent. We'll keep up updated on that one as they take on uh, Sauk Rapids tonight. Two receivers now to the near side of the field. A look here as Wilkinson. Quick handoff, runner through, a quick hit there. One, by the way, change in that starting lineup for the Panthers is Matthew Buren. He is out tonight. Well, that's, a, that's a big loss. That's their, that's their number two running back. Came in with 219 yards the season. Meanwhile, as I mentioned, for Wilkinson, he came in with 174 yards. And uh, the key component is controlling those fumbles 
and turnovers. Minimize him, and if he can, Huskies defensively, Jim, what are we looking at? Well, they've got a 3-4, three, uh, a, a three, and their normal 3-4, they're back to their regular uh, depth on defense. And Wilkerson there with a nice run. Forge is ahead. Wilkinson picks up a couple more. That's going to leave second and about their third now and about six. You know, the, the, the key to the uh, the offense or the defense for the Huskies is that linebacking crew. Uh, you know, number seven, Bubba Weichel, along with Ben Peterson, both have been outstanding on, on the interior. Uh, and uh, those outside linebackers need to line them up. Panthers on their first drive of this game. This third down now and four for the Panthers. Keeping it this time. Wilkinson spin move gets by the first attempted tackler. Nice little spin cycle move by Wilkinson to move it up another 10 yards after that initial contact. And that's going to be another first down for the Panthers. Yeah, Wilkerson playing it, playing the pitch the right way, tucks it and gets past Luke Beck. Beck uh, um, was trying to defend two players at once. You can see him slapping his helmet, a little disappointed in that one. So a couple of nice carries, picks up two first downs as Wilkinson. And the Panthers on the move. First down on the Andover 23-yard line. On the Friday Night Lights here on QCTV, Joe Rulin along with Jim Childs. Great to bring you this matchup. Snap on that Veer offense, a pitch out wide. Trying to get to the outside, well contained and taken down there. And I think it was a fumble. There, it looks like it might have been a fumble. It is. Husky ball. Good eyes, Jim, on that far side of the field. We talked that turnovers could be a game changer. And already here in the first, as the Panthers are driving, Brown gets stripped. Oh, that was not the strip, but uh, they'll have it there. That looked like the elbow clearly was yeah. down. Well, no replay in high, in high school, and uh, Danicky with the tackle. And uh, coming coming up with the uh, recovery is Ben Peterson. He's got two, uh, he's got a couple of interceptions now. He's got uh, um, a couple of, uh, of uh, fumble recoveries as well. Huskies come out, a team that's picked up a big win last weekend against Elk River. First carry up the middle, Davenport battles his way for nine on his first carry, Davenport comes in with 325 yards rushing, make that now 335, five touchdowns averaging seven yards a carry and 81 a game. And you see Hudson Maynard right there taking over for the uh, injured Chase Pemberton. Had a nice week last week, over 300 yards passing and four touchdowns. Second down, quick out to Bagali. Bagali catches this one down the line, goes outside, picks up five. Plenty of success, Jim, as you mentioned, on those <laughs> tunnel screens, but the quick outs, and just let Bagali do his thing. Yeah, and uh, last week we saw Bagali had a career uh, night as uh, well over 200 yards. He's second right now in the state with uh, receiving yards. 535 touchdowns, receiving yards, six touchdowns. That's 133 a game for the senior Bagali. He's in motion as he moves left to right. Penalty here, whistled, and make it some illegal movement here for Andover. It's good to see Luke Wolf back out there now as the uh, the the left tackle, big left tackle. You can see right here a little movement from the uh, the left guard. And over on the season, 22 penalties now and 200 yards exactly, but they've been penalized on those 22 infractions. Looking now, second down and 11, keeping it here. Maynard punches his way ahead just beyond the 40 to the 41 yard line. And we'll read now at a third down and about seven for Andover. Yeah, we saw uh, um, Maynard kind of come into his own in the second half last week against Elk River with rushing. Uh, very, very talented uh, when he gets going and see if he can keep continue that. In motion, Davenport out to the right behind the trips. Now they try to screen up the middle to Denicky. Well played. Denicky makes one tackle break, continues his way down the field, all the way to the Spring Lake Park 36 yard line. A great call that time. Yeah, you can see the key was uh, Davenport getting out there where they've got three wide, and uh, Denicky cut right in there. Beautiful play design and uh, da some downfield passing for the Huskies. Denicky with a touchdown catch last week, uh, last Friday. 
Now nine catches on the season for 130 yards. Just a quick wing out pass there to Davenport. Just kind of short armed that one. I don't know if he just lost the location of the ball. A lot of traffic in front, but an incomplete pass. Good ball, though, by Maynard. It was right and leading right in front of him and taking him down the field. Yeah, and uh, uh, Davenport, when he gets out in space, is so good. Uh, that one right there, just uh, you tried to tuck it a little before he had the chance. 7.37 to go here in the first quarter. This is the Andover's first possession of the game. In motion once again, Davenport. Kick back over to Davenport out wide. He'll try to make a couple of moves. He eludes the tackle. Another spin move. And he'll pick up about six on that pass completion. Yeah, something new that I ha we haven't seen yet, Joe, this, uh, in the games that we've done. AFA and Davenport out there at the same time. Uh, good job to get uh, your playmakers out there. Quick pass by Maynard and uh, really five yards all on uh, Davenport. 19th catch of the season for Davenport. He has three touchdowns as a result of those uh, receptions as well. Looking now at a third and six. Back is Maynard, he has a receiver open over the middle. Not much of a window there, but just beyond the reach of the Spring Lake Park and the Panthers safety. Otherwise that could have been a pick. Fourth and seven, I'm guessing Andover will keep the troops on the field. Yeah, Sawyer, that was Sawyer Thompson back there. He's got two interceptions. He's a kind of a ball hawk for the uh, Spring, Lake Eight, pa Spring Lake Park Panthers. Easy for me to say. <laughs> it's three to the right or left right now for the Huskies. Kind of a three by one set. Maynard completes it to Denicky, the big target at six foot five. Denicky picks up the first down. Bonus yards all the way to close to the 20 yard line of Spring Lake Park. That's going to be a first down. Yeah, you know, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, Denicky's that big. He's agile, too. He got right in there. He's probably more of a tight end size than he is a wide receiver, but he's pretty agile as well. First down and 10 now for Andover. Pass right out that fine. They were trying to jump it. They surely disrupted the, the Panthers on that pass play, trying to get a quick hit out to Begali. Yeah, that was uh, there. Yeah, there was four receivers out there, four wideouts, and uh, well read by the uh, Panthers. Bring up second down here, 6:28 to play. In the first, they'll stay with the core four to the right. In terms of receiver, offset spread, and it's a keeper by Maynard. Scraps and digs his way, picks up about five on the play. Yeah, nice play, nice play design. They had, you know, four again out wide, and uh, you just uh, you have to respect that with the Huskies. That leaves a limited amount of tacklers on the inside or on the near side. So good job by the Huskies to get five back. So far, they've been able to find Denicky kind of in that soft zone. Their Panthers playing a 4-4-3 back again. Maynard looks left now. Come back to the right. Bagali tries to break a tackle, but a good ankle tackle that time by the Panthers slowed him down so he could get some support from his yeah, other. Kind of a delay out of the out of the backfield uh, was Bagali, and it's kind of one of those bubble screens. Luckily, the uh, Huskies didn't lose anything. Bagali fight, fought to get back to the line of scrimmage, fourth down. Yeah, Maynard kept looking left. I think he was trying to seal off some more potential coverage on Bagali. So we're set now for a fourth and six. Look for Denicky. Huh? I'm guessing that may be the X factor right now. Denicky spread all the way to the left. Two receivers left, two to the right. Back to Maynard. He looks to the left and right on course. It's Denicky who makes the reception. Great hands, eludes a tackle, and he's marked out at the nine yard line. He's certainly been the X factor early on this drive for Andover. Yeah, and uh, you, you called it right. He, and he was looking the whole way. The, uh, the Spring Lake, part, uh, the Panthers are only rushing three, so they're dropping eight into the coverage. That's a lot of Panthers back there. First down, goal to go, four, and over just inside that 10-yard line. Maynard, that's going to be Denicky. Making that snap, oh, looks like Wildcat formation a bit there. He'll pick up about three on the play. Yeah, they, they implemented that a couple of weeks ago. They got a Husky down, hopefully, let's see. Uh, and it uh, looks like it's uh, Weichel, the linebacker who comes in, is kind of one of those H-backs. Uh, 
Weichel will come out. Comes off the field and assisted. 450 to play. Andover coming in had outscored their opponents 181 to 141. Uh, just kind of got rolled up on. That happened to be coming to the game, by the way, Jim. <laughs> yes. There's a pass out front to the side, to the corner, making the run, and it's a TD for Davenport. Cut and zigzags his way, found a gap, and takes it to the house. What a, what a great play by Davenport. He is so good once he gets that ball and made no mistake, untouched. There were plenty of Panthers out there, defenders out there, but uh, nice first drive for the Huskies. Well, it was a great gap once they replay that as well. It's a huge alley for Davenport, and the key thing is getting those hands extended enough as they're trying to throw you open. Good-looking crowd on homecoming tonight. Point after attempt. Snap the spot, the kick is up, and it is good. Still perfect on the season. Mr. 20, 22 for 22. Mr. Automatic. So the Huskies with a quick throw out and Davenport caught it in stride and untouched into the end zone. There were four Panthers that could have uh, made contact. He had to outrun Teddy Wackman, the leading tackler for the Panthers and the speedster himself at 6'2", 170 when he first got that, but uh, Wackman could not catch the speedy Davenport and Stavenport on the season picks up his fourth touchdown reception of the season and his ninth touchdown on offense. He's also got a kickoff return. So he's in double digits. Touchdowns overall and the Huskies are up seven nothing. 13, the first. yeah, 13 play drive, which is uh, pretty impressive when you think about uh, last week in the first half, I think they had 16 plays. So. You can never tell what will transpire here with the Huskies. <laughs> no. And what is, after the first uh, quarter last week, 21-21 kickoff again. Sending as deep as Eklund. It's picked up again at the five. No reverse this time. They'll pick it up, but hammered straight down on the tackle there by the Huskies. It is the return specialist for Spring Lake Park at the 18-yard line. Colin Welch. The sophomore safety take, he took it out. He, he took it. Uh, he must be back there for Van Buren. Or Buren, yes, yeah, sorry. The, the Andover defense. Uh, and we've got Bailey Davis and Weichel up front. Caden Weichel up front. Peterson, Donnelly, Weichel, and Beck in the on the uh, linebacking crew. Grease, AFA, Danicky, and Amundsen back in the backfield for the Huskies. Spring Lake Park, two receivers to the left. That's a keeper. Once again, getting a little flow to the game there. Wilkinson picks up a healthy six yards on that carry. Yeah, Wil Wilkinson, like I said, against Moorhead, had well over 100 yards and then got injured, was out. And here's uh, the, uh, the yep. offensive. So Drum, Sudbeck, Christensen, Vano, and Smith up front. Uh, Eagle is the uh, tight end. Conkler, uh, Fernandez uh, as wide receivers. Brown and Buren in, are in the backfield, and uh, actually Buren is not. He is out tonight. Wilkinson, the quarterback. Receiver split. This is a handoff up the middle, plowing his way ahead for that pickup was Anders Holland. Anders Holland with that. He had 127 yards in this game against St. Francis earlier this year. You know what's amazing, Joe, is you know everybody in the entire stadium and watching at home know that uh, Spring Lake Park is going to run it. And they're still able to be successful at it. So that's just good execution on, on the Panthers' side. It's about 90%, I believe, uh, running percentage versus pass on that offense. Jumping offside, it'll be Andover picking up their second penalty here in the first quarter. Prior to the snap, encroachment, number 21 on the defense. Five yard penalty, still first down. And Joe, you had mentioned you, you were watching Wilkinson throw, and you said, boy. He's, he throws a nice ball, but that's just not part of their repertoire. They may throw four times a game. Absolutely rolling out and had a good look pre-game on the field. A chance to speak with the head coach for the Panthers. Handoff this time goes to the first back through. Great job of jamming that up. No place to go. That time for Holland. 
Yeah, that was uh, Davis. Camille Davis up there, the nose tackle, able to wrestle him down. Still leaves a short second and five now for the Panthers. When in doubt, they've used Wilkinson to get around the corner. Mentioned Wilkinson averaging 58 yards a game rushing. A season high of 134 against your spuds, Jim. <laughs> Handoff again, right off of uh, the center and guard. And not much room there as the Huskies shut it down. Pick and up it, maybe a yard. Yeah, Sam Cole's now in. So, Husky player down right now, and uh, and they're back. 2:08 to play here in this first quarter. Coming into tonight, the Spring Lake Park offense had been averaging 225 yards a game. And let's take a look at the. Uh, so the Northwest uh, Gold, uh, the North Star West Gold Division, Andover right now at three and one. Uh, Sock, uh, Sock Rapids and Elk River. The, these two are playing tonight. We'll keep you updated as as we can uh, with, as we get updates. Uh, both those two uh, are playing. Cambridge Isani two and two. That's a uh, good start for Cambridge Isani. And uh, St. Francis is 0-4 uh, after a really good season last year. Bailey Taylor walks off there for the Huskies. Hands on the ship, but comes off on his own there. As I mentioned, it is uh, Spring Lake Park averaging 225 yards a game on the ground and eight touchdowns. Meanwhile, throwing the ball, averaging right now at about 21 yards a game. A lot of similarities with them and, and Elk River. But that speed of Elk River is just unbelievable. And last year, certainly the experience. But uh, certainly somewhat similar, more of a veer versus the power T for Elk River. And looking forward to really track that game tonight, Elk River and uh, Sauk Rapids. Third yeah. down and about a yard and a half, Jim, here for the Panthers. Yeah, good, good, good discussion between uh, uh, defensive coordinator, Coach Weichel, and uh, the the referee, I don't know what that was about, but you're right, third and two right now. This is a big opportunity for the the uh, Huskies to get a stop. Just about said spots. Thanks, Joe. I got them in my head now. Set up now. Hard count. He'll hold on to it, but a call here. Legal procedure this time. It backfires on the Panthers instead of trying to draw the offside. They created Prior some illegal staff. movement. False start. start. Number 79 start. on the offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. First penalty of the game for the Panthers. Well, that, fi that five yards they got on that first down, they're giving it back now. As, uh, yeah, you can see right there, 79 with a, with a little bit of jump. It's just the sixth time this season that the Panthers have been flagged for a penalty for 60 yards total now. They're in a throwing situation here, Jim. Let's see how they try to counter this third and seven for the Panthers on their second possession of the game. They'll run it, and that's Wilkinson again. Buries it to about the 40. This is going to leave. Oh, a fourth and probably really three, three and a half. But uh, for the Panthers, we'll see how they want to work this. They'll look like they want to bring out the punt team. So uh, I did get a little intel that uh, they may be looking to, for a punt block. So we'll see the, the uh, Davenport back deep, but uh, we might see that tonight. Yafe on the end, trying to charge in here, trying to turn it over. Nice punt. Kicker, punter here averaging almost 36 yards a punt this season. For Spring Lake Park, gets that one off, turns it over, and gets a friendly hop. Takes it all the way back into the Andover backyard, about 16-yard line, and that's where the Huskies will get their second possession of the game. Joe, we see we just saw something that we haven't seen in uh, in about four weeks, and that was a punt. You're right. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering what that odd thing was on the field. There's a look at head coach Tom Deleuze and their offense. Wolf at left tackle, Bieber left guard, Pelkey at center, Stone at right guard, Boynton also at right tackle, followed by Johnny Fry, Cam Bagali, Aiden Shaw, along with one wide out, and Luke Denicky, who's put on a show already here on the first drive, and then Demario Davenport, recipient of a pass there from Maynard. He 
walked in on the touchdown pass from Maynard to Davenport on the first drive of the game. Nice eight yard pickup for Maynard on that one. Maynard averaging about six time, almost a pickoff. Throws it out wide, just beyond the numbers, and a nice reception and a pickup of, gosh, maybe about a yard and a half. That's a long pass for a pickup of about a yard and a half, hoping to get it. But uh, a look at the defensive set for John Stewart is Aniga, followed by uh, Brody Gemlo. Jason Ego as a tackle. Miles Thompson as a defensive end. Caleb Skelly as a linebacker, followed by Teddy Wackman, the leading tackler on the squad. Latch, Dunbar, Fernandez. We'll be back for the second quarter right after this. I taught for 20 years, but I started forgetting my lectures. Eventually, he had to quit. My therapist recommended we go to the doctor. The early Alzheimer's diagnosis allowed us to take control of the situation. He's been such a positive force and, and so loving. Thank you. You're welcome. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Homecoming on Huskies night here at QCTV. A quick look at the first yeah. quarter. In motion, Huskies Davenport seven, out nothing. to the right behind the track. Yeah, you see right here. Trash. Nice screen little uh, screen, kind of a bubble screen out to Danike. Big 24-yard pickup, and uh, Huskies are out, out and running. They only had the ball one time. There again, another pass to Danike. Danike had uh, three catches for 46 yards in that first uh, drive right here. Maynard out to Davenport, nine-yard touchdown, and the Huskies are up 7-0 as we start the second quarter. Maynard near the first down marker, if not. He is just got by, picked up the first down, did Maynard. The Huskies on the season offensively have an average in 186 yards a game. That's running the ball. That uh, equates for 12 touchdowns and six yards per carry. Maynard keeps this one himself. Again, picks up maybe a stubborn yard or two. Meanwhile, when they're throwing the ball and over 246 yards in the air a game, and that's 15 yards of reception for 11 TDs and an impressive 73 completion rate. Yeah, not bad. Right there you saw, we saw Brody Gimlo, number 77. We'll be calling his number a lot for the Panthers. He's a, uh, a wall right in the middle. Three by one set here for the Huskies. They pass, zing one, find it in a seam. A nice ball that time by Maynard. He threw that on a line confidently. And hit his open receiver there. Yeah, Picked nice. Up. Yeah, Davenport again with a nice catch. Good downfield pass again. And over trips to the left. They fake the pitch to Davenport. He rolls right and tries to hit Bagali. He had Bagali behind coverage. He could have just put a little bit more air under that and overthrew prime receiver Bagali. Yeah. But Bagali had beat the free safety Welch. And like you mentioned, Joe, it was just it just needed to get have a little air and have Bagali run under that. That would have been a, uh, a sure six. This will leave second and ten for Andover. 10.48 to go here in a fast moving first quarter. Now hitting just into the second, a quick out, and there's a pick, and they should get at it because they haven't flagged it down. I, they're just seeing that too much. The first couple of times he tried to throw that, yeah. you could tell they were knocking on the door, and scouting reports almost paid some major dividends. Yeah, and that was uh, that was Miles Thompson, the senior. He read that right from the start. You could see that he practiced that this week. They knew that that was coming. And uh, Davis just, uh, Miles uh, just about had a uh, pick six. Trying to outdo his brother, Sawyer Thompson, who has two interceptions on the season. Third and 10. This pass intended over the top, looking for Denicky beyond his outstretched arms in the flat. And the Huskies are done on that possession. One first down, and then three and out after that. So it'll, it'll be punting, which we didn't see also <laughs> last week, Jim. No. You're right. Nope. Denicky will be back. And you've got uh, Welch back along with uh, Day, uh, Brown. 
So here's a need to know for you. Need to know by Joe as we start this. Total yards to start the game for Andover on the season, 1,728. For their opponents, 1,730. <laughs> what a balance. <laughs> uh, defense and offense. A little need to know by Joe out there for Taylor. <laughs> Ten and a but half to play here, and we'll down it. And now Spring Lake Park and the Panthers will get their third possession of this game. And it will be certainly an opportunity here as they take a look and see if there's some uh, potential rain coming in that they may be taking a look at and potential lightning as may cause a delay as they're meeting on the field right now. And there's another need to know by Joe for you with all that rain coming in. Yeah, we'll see. I don't. I, I, they have to spot lightning or hear thunder before they can call it. Maybe they're being they're proactively doing it. So it's now a spot foul. It's a spot foul. Oh, yes. Okay. But uh, they'll get a look and see how they want to do it. But uh, and stick stick with us because this is a great game. Seven nothing. And Spring Lake Park getting ready to get at it. The one thing, Jim, I've been impressed with with the Panthers this year. And and here's another need to know. Okay, by Joe. Thirteen. The number thirteen has been part of each game for the Spring Lake Park Panthers. The Panthers, meanwhile, have lost. Their only two losses have come to two teams in the top five of Class 5A, and that would be the Spuds and also Rogers. But their two wins against uh, St. Francis as well, but those ones have won by scores of just 13. A number 13 is involved in each one of those games, but the two and two, record that they have is just does not represent the team that they have in fact against Rogers last Friday Jim it was tied with about a minute to go in the fourth quarter against Rogers yeah and uh, so Rogers scores and then uh, puts uh, uh, Spring Lake Park in a really tough position with their you know the, the lack of throwing that they do Wilkinson throws a pick six and that that, that spreads the, the game out right now they're looking at uh, the radar right now as uh, you can see out there it's um, uh, it's Eric Latola who's uh, in the dark jacket along with uh, I believe it's the Spring Lake Park uh, athletic director and the trainer and I don't uh, least of the trainers out there maybe uh, making sure that uh, uh, she's there that uh, nobody pulls a hamstring you got it so Spring Lake Park as I mentioned the team close to going three and one as well they've had tough losses but uh, their component this season is they've been outscored mm -hmm. have the Panthers 80 to 54 80 to 54 this season they're great at jumping out in that first quarter in fact they've outscored their opponents 27 uh, to 3 but now make that 27 to 10 since Andover scored but their downside is that fourth quarter as they've been outscored 0 to 39 in that fourth quarter and that includes Moorhead and Rogers putting up 28 points alone in the fourth quarter a yeah. big part for their losses yeah and and you know it, it, their the, their their ability and you know the one touchdown that the huskies have uh is off a turnover and uh, that was uh, when uh, spring lake park was driving so uh i think right now they're they're trying to decide you know when to start the weather delay it'd be nice if we just started to go and, and decided it so i kind of like this we get a chance you and i always have such great uh, homework and pre-work yes, done. We yep. can actually cover some of it yes, now yes. as well, but um, they'll get it sorted out here. And let's do this. Uh, we're gonna let things reset. We'll return briefly in a moment. There's one thing we can all agree on, the promise of our constitution and the hope that liberty and justice is for all people. For over 100 years, the ACLU has fought on behalf of millions of Americans, protecting our vote and our voice. Freedom to love who we love, the right to choose, and much more. Learn how ACLU's defending free speech and all our civil liberties at myaclu.org. Hey, welcome back to Andover High School. Hey, this is homecoming. Randover and what would homecoming be without fireworks? And right now there's just lightning <laughs> that they're overlooking, go. a little weather emergency that they're going through here. So hang with us as that system blows through. Joe, I, I've got it. I got a, a need to know by by 
by me, not necessarily Joe, probably not as in, as entitled or is not as uh, uh, important as yours. But so these teams have met three times in the playoffs, and we talked about that in the pregame. All three of them one point victories, and uh, the Huskies have one victory. That's back in 2015. Uh, that's when uh, they they uh, to to get the state, and then uh, the uh, the other two were in state in the quarterfinals. The uh, um, I'm gonna we're gonna. We're gonna we're gonna end up on a weather delay here, Joe. So it's a 30-minute delay right now. My guess it's going to be a lot longer than 30 minutes as uh, we've seen the radar come come through. So we'll have to kind of update you as we go. We'll, we can update you through Twitter and through uh, the YouTube website. So uh, I'll tell you what, keep checking here with uh, QCTV. You'll get some warm up or some updates, as you mentioned, Jim, through, through Twitter and also YouTube and other avenues. We'll return after this weather delay with more football, but uh, keep checking in. Hello, good morning. Welcome to continuation of high school football. This is part two of Spring Lake Park Panthers versus the Andover Huskies. There was a weather delay last night. QCTV was out here with their production truck. Uh, game had a great start to it. Lightning and a storm did roll in, suspended play. They decided to resume 11 a.m. here today. You'll notice things look different. They sound different. It's daytime. Uh, we weren't able to get an entire truck crew out the next day. And in fact, I'm not even from QC TV. I am Kenton Cape with North Metro TV. Malik Pluard is up on the roof on camera. He's a QC TV guy. And we are making a joint production in order to make this work so that we can get the, uh, the rest of this game on television. Uh, so... Continuing on, we're going to pick up uh, 10.29 left in the second quarter. Springley Park will start with the ball. Andover had just punted to them. Uh, we can run through Spring Lake Park offense as it looks. It is uh, offensive line from left, tackle over to right. Jackson Drum, Jack Sudbeck, Sudbeck Gavin Christensen, Eli Vang, Jordan Smith, tight end Jason Eagle. Wide receivers Keelan Conkler and Francisco Fernandez, fun name. Running back Lamari Brown, always electric Lamari. Uh, Matthew Bur Buren stepping in for injured running back. And the quarterback is sophomore number 11, Tyler Wilkinson. Defense for Andover, Bailey Taylor, Tremaine Davis, Caden Weichel across the defensive line. Linebackers Ben Peterson, Luke Donnelly, Caleb Weichel, Luke Beck. The secondary is Obi Ayafe, Luke Denicky, and Charlie Amundsen. Uh, we are set to pick things up here. First and 10 for the Panthers at the 27-yard line. Wilkinson under center. And uh, the give is to Lamari Brown. He'll pick up a couple of yards. So I know last night they charged Lamari Brown with a fumble. His, uh, his elbow was down, but it was tough to see. It was a quick play. Andover did capitalize getting the turnover. Uh, they do have that seven-point lead. It was a uh, swing pass from Maynard 
to Davenport, DeMario Davenport for a seven-yard score. That's our only score of the game. And here is a pitch to Lamari Brown, getting a block on the outside. He is stripped of the football, and Andover is pounced on. It's going to be Husky's ball. They're trying to dig through the humanity to get to the pile, but it is Andover ball. So they will recover on the 33-yard line of Spring Lake Park. So Luke Donnelly on the recovery. Now we'll get to see Andover's offense, who scored in the first quarter on a swing pass. I don't know if he still calls it Lucy, but that was the play that they used to run with the running back in motion, catching that pass and running it in for the score. Here's Maynard under center, passing to Luke Denicky. Makes, almost makes the grab. He lost it there. Tried to corral it in, was not able to. Already I'm way off on the clock. That's how this is gonna go. Offense for Andover. We mentioned quarterback Hudson Maynard, Jr. Stepping in for injured Chase Pemberton. Get well soon, pepper spray. Offensive line, Luke Wolf, Holden Baberg, Alec Pelkey, Calvin Stone. Here's a keeper for Maynard. And he'll get about five yards before he's brought down. The right tackle, Aiden Winters Boyton. Wide receivers, there's a lot of them. Johnny Frey Cambagalli, Aiden Shaw, and Luke Denicky. Running back to Mario Davenport. And of course, Hudson Maynard, number three under center. Third and five now for the Huskies. Maynard back to throw. He's got a man, but he overthrows him and through the hands of defensive back and wide receiver. You should have caught that. Keelan Conkler, you got to catch that. Oh, that's Francisco Fernandez. Had one and two switched around here. Francisco, that's a fun name. Uh, I'm sure they'd like to have that one back. But fourth down now, they're in fourth down, four down territory, so they will go here. Fourth and five. Cambagalli in motion. Maynard looking to throw, and he'll step up. He's got his man in the backfield breaking a tackle. He's got first down and more. What an effort there. And he's out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. That is Demario Davenport. Nice release valve to have. You can dump it to him and have him pick up the first down for you. Huskies! Huskies first down, 18 yard line of Spring Lake Park driving once again. Here is quick pass to Luke Denicky dragging two tacklers with him. Potential tacklers finally driven out of bounds. At the 12 yard line, gain of six. Second and four for the Huskies. Handoff, a fake the handoff is Maynard on the keep and he will get inside the five, pick up the first down. Keeper by number three, Hudson Maynard, and that's an Andover. Nice Husky. play, and it'll set up first and goal on the four yard line for Andover. Keeps it again and, oh. Really bought the fake, did Spring Lake Park there, and Maynard strolls into the end zone. And it is a touchdown Huskies. Now with a 13-0 lead. It'll be Carter Eklund to attempt the extra point. Blow that one dead. Mm -hmm. 
So offside's defense half the distance. Will they go for two or kick it? I'll kick it. Kick is good. Kick is good. 14 to nothing. And over leads. So Spring Lake Park now with two turnovers. Lamari Brown uh, watching QC's broadcast last night. You could see Lamari Brown's elbow was down before the ball came out. But uh, ref called it as they saw it on the field, said it was a fumble. Yeah, but this last fumble here on uh, the opening drive of football part two, Lamari Brown cleanly stripped and over short field. And they go 33 yards on the scoring drive. And it took just seven plays for them to score. And now a two score lead as they will kick off Lamari Brown and Jamal Smith deep for the Panthers. Eklund. High kick be fielded at the five. Fake to Brown. As Smith, <laughs> it's a lot of tackles to break to get to the 15 yard line. And I never started the clock. We'll just wind that down to 8.15. No one will even know. Let's see, announcer says something. He probably won't. Panther offense back on the field. So running the Veer offense, not designed to come back from a deficit. So they don't, they don't really want to fall too far behind here. They could use a nice long scoring drive here or a quick scoring drive. I don't think they'll be picky. So on the keep is our sophomore quarterback, Tyler Wilkinson. 11, Wilkinson. He will pick up five yards. Tyler yeah, they'll be fine picking up five yards Luke to carry. Spunny Park will have no problem with that. Second down. So there's some similarities to what uh, Andover saw last week with the Elk River, but still very different. Uh, run heavy team, that's the same, but how it is packaged and uh, carrying out fakes and pitches becomes different responsibilities for the defense. So we have a flag down. Could be procedure, motion. So that penalty on Obi Ayafe on the end of her defense. So first down for the Panthers, first and 10. Wilkinson rolling out and throwing. That is incomplete. Wilkinson's pass is incomplete. He was looking for Francisco. That's a fun name. So trying to catch him off guard there with a pass, but uh, was not able to connect. As Jeff Schlieff used to say all the time, people say we don't pass, we pass all the time. It's just backwards referring to their, uh, their pitch option. So Twins left for Spring Lake Park. Here's Wilkinson with that pitch to Lamari Brown. Got to wrap that up. <laughs> Protect the ball. Football is pitched he is Lamari brought Brown. down by Obi Brown, picking up eight yards on that, or seven Obi yards on that carry, it looks like. It'll be second and two. Or excuse me, third down. Third and two.
And going to be short on that. Decisions to make here on fourth and one. Carry on the play, uh, the one yard carry, Anders, Anders Holland. And uh, they are going to go forward here on fourth and one. On the tackle, number seven, Caleb White. So big fourth down here for the Panthers. They do not want to turn it over on We're downs down. here Let's in their own go, territory. Huskies! Already down two scores. And this time the carry over left guard Anders Holland picks up five yards and a first down. That'll move the chains for the Panthers. That's a Spring Lake Park first down. Wilkinson again back to throw. Oh, uh, throw too high Tyler for Wilkinson Jason Eagle. His tight end, eight, big Miles tight end coming Jackson. across. Defending on play number three, McIntyre Grease. Panthers looking to throw on first down here. On their last two first down attempts, attempts on first down. Second and 10 now for the Panthers. Wilkinson will pitch to Buren and he's got space. He's got the first down. Almost breaks another tackle. Brought down there by Charlie Amundsen. Saved it from becoming an even bigger play, but a 15 yard gain. 16 yard gain and first down in Andover territory now at the 44 yard line. I believe this is the first time that Spring Lake Park has gotten into Andover territory. So they had a fumble on their first possession and a punt. And Bjorn, another nice run. Another chunk play for them. Nine yards, close to a first down. The key for them has been hanging on to the football. Actually, it was a first down. They spotted him a first down, so it's first and 10 Panthers. Wilkinson keeps here, and he is tripped up. Uh, again, had a little bit more daylight there, but a saving tackle. Ben Peterson on the stop. It'll be another first down. Spring Lake Park first down. Down to the 23-yard line of Andover. Wilkinson pitches to Brown. Well defended there. Oh, wow, he somehow finds a seam and he cuts it up for seven yards. Nice run by Lamari Brown. Tackle made by number 21, Luke Donnelly. Luke Donnelly on the stop for Andover. It's uh, Lamari Brown. Well, you can look back at his youth football days, some of the long runs he rattled off in those championship games that we covered. Just a fun player to watch then as he is now. It's fun to see him at the varsity level. And Brown close to a first down. By number 45, Lamari Brown. And they'll say he's just a bit short. Second, no, third and real short. Go, 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 go. 
So third and short, Wilkinson hands it off to Buren and he, he is able to get the yardage, picks up three yards, a cloud of dust and a first down at the spring, excuse me, the Andover 11 yard line. They could still get another first down inside the one yard line. So a nice drive here by the Panthers. Would love to punch it in for their first score of the game. Back to pass, Wilkinson. Oh, nowhere to throw. Wow, no, the jump pass. Dangerous play, oh my goodness. He came down with the football for a touchdown. What a play. Jason Eagle, wow, soaring high into the clouds and the defenders Wilkinson to snatch the football. Could have been an interception, but Eagle with his talons grabs it. Let me put the points on the board. Six points for Park, wow. Did not see that one coming. <laughs> Another first down pass attempt for Spring Lake Park. And the kick from Carter Smith is up and good. Put that one on the board, 14 to seven. We have ourselves a game. Makes me wish we had uh, like a replay with another three, four angles on it, but you saw it. What a play. So plays like that, you can watch uh, highlights uh, from QC TV and North Metro TV. I know they'll be on Sports Den on Monday. Uh, so this game, plan to assemble it together and get the whole thing in uh, one nice little package to air on both North Metro TV and uh, Quad Cities Television. As this is football part two. Now with the Panthers on the board, it is 14-7 as Smith will kick off back deep, dangerous uh, return men, of course, Demario Davenport and Obia Yafe. And as Elk River did the week before, they are not going to kick it at those fine return gentlemen. And as a result, uh, nice hands there by Gross, I think it was. So 42 yard line is where they will start. Andover Will, first and 10. Boy, they're, last week and this week, their starting field position has been tremendous. Uh, so Andover comes out in their package with four wide rights. They got, uh, one man covered out there, which means he cannot catch the ball. Here's the blocker on that screen pass. Demario Davenport swallowed up there. Looks like Miles Thompson may have been on the tackle there. Jason Eagle who caught that touchdown pass. Miles Thompson, former Andover player uh, in middle school before he and family changed to Spring Lake Park a few years back. And rolling out and throwing, oh, with room to run, rumbling, dumps, breaking free. And he's still up on his feet. And into the end zone, touchdown, Aiden Shaw. With a 59 yard touchdown score. Wow, what a play. He broke minimum 17 tackles on that play to get to pay dirt. Aiden Shaw would not be denied. So Andover has a downfield threat, but man, they have done most of the damage on short passes and screens with blocking and excellent running. Eklund's extra point Andover is good, 21-7. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was going to be anything like the Elk River game with the scoring. I thought it would be significantly less with, with uh, Spring Lake Park uh, defense here. But Andover still putting up points now, up to 21 here. A 
as point totals for Andover this year against St. Thomas Academy, 55 points in the win, 21 in a loss to Mankato West, 42 in a win against Cambridge, and of course, 63 in a win against Elk River. So they've been known to put points on the scoreboard and they're making good use of that nice, big, expensive scoreboard that they, they run videos on thanks to Wasp Productions as they will kick off here. Lamari Brown will field it at the nine yard line looking for better field position than last time. And they will get that as he gets close to the 30 yard line on the return. And now my clock's almost right. Excellence kick is by number 45, Lamari Brown. So if you're wondering why there isn't, you know, the first and 10 and, you know, great accuracy on the graphic, it's because there's just one guy that's here trying to do all those things. <laughs> Thank you for your grace. First and 10 Panthers. Wilkinson, the pitch to Buren. Finds a few blocks and is able to Carry cut it up for a three yard gain to the 33. This is where they turned it over a couple drives ago and we have an injured player down. So timeout on the field while they tend to the injured player. So you may know, you may have heard last night's game suspended due to weather. Uh, severe weather, there was lightning, suspended play, lots of rain, lots of wind. Uh, I was determined it wasn't gonna get any better anytime soon, so made the decision to be able to uh, move the game, the remainder of the game to uh, today here, Saturday at 11 a.m. They were just a little over a quarter into the game when they stopped. And uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty warm, end of uh, September day here. Springick now uh, second and seven back to throw. He was looking for Fernando. Oh, sorry for the live viewers. We had, uh, I had something down here on the audio, so I apologize for the difficulties here. Had it working earlier. I didn't realize it had gone away. I apologize for not having that up. So if you're just uh, hearing us live now, uh, this is a North Metro TV and QCTV joint production. Uh, to finish off this game, it was suspended last night and uh, we rejoined here. There was 10:29 uh, remaining in the second quarter when we resumed each team, each team has scored at least once. Two touchdowns for Andover and one for Springley Park here. Carried by number As 45, Lamari Brown. Now 34 seconds remain here in the second quarter. Springley Park trying to drive the third down timeout for Andover here on the play. Uh, again, my apologies if you weren't receiving audio. Hopefully on the rebroadcast, there will be audio uh, on everything. And this will be assembled with the, the first part that was uh, recorded last night from Quad Cities that was out here with the truck. So it's just uh, two guys now here. We got Malik up on the roof, Malik Ford, and I am in the booth, Kenton Kip, trying to do commentary, graphics, directing, control, live stream, and not screw up everything horribly. So far, not perfectly successful in that. Hopefully we'll get better as we go along here. Now fourth and five, Panthers will punt. Set reverb for me. 
Oh, nice tackle on the play. Keelan Conkler on the stop. And uh, my clock's wrong. There's 25 seconds left here in the second quarter. Kind of actually plenty of time for Andover to score, given how quickly they can score. So 39-yard line of Andover is where they will start. Uh, they have two timeouts remaining here in the first half. All right. Trips right for Andover Maynard. We'll cut this up and pick up some yards to the 48, and they'll take a timeout with 18 seconds left. Miles Thompson on the stop. Miles uh, used to play football and basketball for Andover through middle school until his family made the move to Spring Lake Park. Older brother, very successful basketball player for Spring Lake Park the last several years. So timeout here, now one timeout remaining for the Huskies here. As head coach Tom DeVellis coming up with the plan here. So you get clock can stop on a first down, at least temporarily. You can get out of bounds and you got that one timeout still left. Yet feasibly can run two or three plays here for the end of the half. Got John's getting in the mix. You know he's going to be in there. All right. Ball at the 46 for Andover. Second and three. Not that the downage matters much. Maynard stepping up, and he's going to run again, but he's stopped. Looks like uh, Miles Thompson in on the stop. Maynard is taken down by number 77. Brody and Gemlo. also 77, Brody Gemlo. So last time out used by the Huskies. Nope, they're just going to let it go. That's the end of the first half. Andover All right, so that Park is halftime. All right, let me see if I can let's lose that. And Oh, this thing is burning hot. Give me one second. All right, it is halftime here from Andover High School. And as I briefly stall for time to get this lower third graphic in, we will head to break. It is 21-7 Huskies at the break. We'll be back with second half action here on North Metro TV and QC TV. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Welcome back. The second half is set to begin in a few minutes. The teams are out and warming up. Uh, again, apologize for the, the start of this restart, at least live, as uh, it was completely my fault, the lack of audio. That's on me. Uh, I am Kenton Kip. I am attempting to, uh, to stream and to record, do graphics and commentary here for the uh, resumption, the part two of Spring Lake Park in Andover here on this fine, sunny, uh, surprisingly very warm, especially inside of this room where I'm sweating profusely, booth at Andover High School. 21 7 Andover leading. So, a joint production here between QC TV and North Metro TV. It's QC TV started us off last night, but we couldn't get through the whole game. So 
So scoring so far, last night uh, we had one score in the first quarter, and that was uh, Maynard to Davenport on a seven-yard reception for a touchdown here. Uh, we started with a fumble uh, for Spring Lake Park. They resumed with 10-29 in the second quarter, and uh, Andover defense was able to strip Lamari Brown at the football takeover on the 33 and had a scoring drive Maynard in from five yards up in the touchdown run, made it 14-0. Spring Lake Park, a long drive after that. Uh, they needed that. They got a, a passing touchdown from Wilkinson to Eagle. Uh, great play by Jason Eagle, number six, junior tight end to catch the touchdown pass from 11 yards out. They made it 14-7, and then Aiden Shaw, took a, a short pass and took it 59 yards for the score. That makes it 21-7 here at the half. Spring Lake Park will kick off to start the second half. And it's been a while since someone's actually kicked it to a returner of the Huskies. And it's happening right now. Buckle up. Well, confidence, I like it. So, gave it the full boot. No return. no return as that one goes into the end zone. It's a nice kick. All right, so we're not going to have down and distance because I am but one man. I will provide mediocre commentary. I'll give you a score graphic. I'll give you a generically accurate clock, and I will tell you the down and distance. And this is, this is the way, this is what we will do. Andover will start from their 20 yard line here. We're starting field position maybe of the entire season, but definitely in this game. So first and 10, they got four receivers to the right. They do like to run some screen passes this way, man in motion. And that is the play they ran on their touchdown in the first quarter. This time it's a fake and Maynard runs. They were looking to draw defense over there, but instead we have a flag. Holding penalty on center Alec Pelkey. Uh, he's been playing the center position for a while. He was playing that back in uh, like fifth or eighth grade. I think that's the first time he's ever held before, at least gotten caught for it. It's a 10 yard penalty, basically half the distance to the goal line. Now first and 10 from the 10 and another whistle. I think they're just gonna re-spot the ball here. Let's try that again. Just lost one second is all. First and 20 for the Huskies. Maynard will keep. And he picks up some yards before being brought down by a bevy of Panthers, including Francisco. That's a fun name. Fernandez and Colin Welch. Now second and 17. This time the handoff to Davenport. Oh, what a smooth cut. Slicing through defenders. He is out to the 24 yard line. It's about, a, about an 11 yard gain there. Uh, yeah, 10 yard gain. Still well shy of the first down. Yeah, 11 yard gain now, third and six from the 24. Davenport in motion, throw to Denicky downfield. Incomplete pass, not able to connect there to Denicky. That will bring up fourth down and a rare punt for the Andover Huskies. They do carry a punter for this situation should it ever arise. And this is one of those times. 
Uh, and by punter, I mean they just have Luke go back there and, and kick it as far as he can. Or fake it and see what he can do. It's one advantage of having one of your offensive weapons as your punter. A punt fielded at the 39 by Colin Welch and a nice return out to the 49. Or midfield, right at midfield there. So the best starting position for Spring Lake Park today, that is for sure. Looking to close that gap, 21-7 here. Wilkinson keeps it, and he is off. Whoa, nice run, and he breaks a tackle. No one to stop him. 50 yards for the score, Tyler Wilkinson. What a play, Tyler Wilkinson. The quick strike, 50-yard touchdown run. I'm going to push this button, give him six points for that, because that's how many points a touchdown is. And they are within a score once again. Kick by Smith is good. 21-14. So not a full-on track meet that a Andover Elk River game usually brings, but scoring has been coming fast and furious here. Things really picked up after a just a seven nothing first quarter here. The Earth's yellow sun gives superpowers to offenses. And that is what is happening here. So last time the Panthers uh, kicked off, they put it in the end zone. They gave Andover at least a chance. Let's see what depth Andover puts their return men here. Last time they were up to the 10, so they were not in position to field the kick all the way to the goal line. If they put a foot in the end zone, it's an automatic touchback. This one is going to be close, and it is just in the end zone. So touchback. So nice kick there. Kick by number 82, Carter Smith into the end zone. Husky. Carter Smith makes his extra point, gets touchbacks on the kickoff. I mean, there's real value in high school to have a kicker that gets you touchbacks, that is consistently scoring, even point after touchdowns, much less field goals. Um, if you don't have that, we saw earlier and last week and then earlier in this game, kicking it, just giving them the ball at the 40 or taking your chances with good return men. But first and 10 here for Andover. Run by number three, a run Hudson by Hudson Maynard. For, uh, for a couple yards. Tackle made by number 12, Josh Locke. Six, Josh Jason Locke Eagle. on the tackle. Now we have a timeout on the field. We're injured Husky down. Be attended to by the trainer. So normally, you know, late September, you don't think of heat affecting players, but this, uh, well, now it's coming up on noon here, but surprisingly hot uh, today and very sunny as McIntyre uh, grease comes off. So more likely to have a few more issues here with the, the sunny heat of a day game. But we will resume here second and six for the Huskies. Quick pass out to Luke Denicky and a nice stick. That's a tough ask for a corner out on an island there. But Sawyer Thompson 
Thompson, number three, making the tackle. He's number 33, but he's, he's the third Thompson. So actually a loss of one on that play. So a tackle for a loss for Sawyer. Sets up third and seven for the Huskies. Maynard back to pass. He's got a man deep in Bagali, and he's got him. It's a race to the end zone, and Bagali's going to win. 76-yard score. Bagali to the house. Touchdown. Wow. Big play strike. I'm surprised that they let him get deep. Just that skinny post going deep. Nice ball. Puts it on him pretty much in stride. Cam Bagali hauls it in, and he is off to the races. 76-yard score. So extra point upcoming now. Carter Eklund handling the kicky duties. Ooh. Nice little play there by the holder, Luke Denicky, picking up that low snap. Put it on the tee, and it is good. We'll get a five from Coach DeVellis on that. 28-14. There's actually 9-19 left. I might be able to fix my clock here. So we saw Cam Bagali have an absolutely ridiculous game versus Elk River. Oh, quite a bit in the screen game, just taking a screen pass, getting blocks, and taking it to the house. And just an amazing catch he had on a throw down field in double coverage. And he literally stiff armed three jabronis, or three defenders, on his way, taking it to the house for a long score. That was a ridiculous play that he had last week. And a beautiful play there on a 76 yard touchdown reception from Maynard. And boom, there's the kickoff, fielded inside the 10. Oh no, going the wrong way. Um, I'm gonna guess Coach Stewart's not gonna be happy with the direction that that run ended up going on the return as there's been one possession where they've had good field position. It's not this one, it was earlier, this last drive where they started from the 50. So now they will start on their 12 yard line. So, great job by the kick coverage team for Andover. Pinning the Panthers deep to start their drive. Wilkinson, hands off, I believe to Buren, short run. They said the ball's loose. I have no idea if the ball came out. Tackle on the play made by number 99, Kaden Weichel. Number 43, Bailey Taylor. Weichel with a stop and Bailey Taylor. I mentioned Lamari Brown. It's been fun to see him uh, from his youth playing days. And it's fun to see these Andover seniors this year uh, coming to their own here on the varsity team after uh, seen a lot of these kids play fifth through eighth grade and then now finally on that varsity team is oh wow that's a tough decision and it's going to be a turnover yep and over ball wilkinson getting pulled down by the shoulder decided to pitch and he was not in a good position to do that caleb michael with the fumble recovery the third turnover of the game for the Panthers, every one of them inside their own territory. And now starting at the Spring Lake Park 12 yard line is the Andover Huskies. First and 10, they have their four receivers right here. Handoff will be to Davenport, going to the left, and man, made that first man miss, and no one was left to stop him as he runs in for the 12-yard score. Huskies. 
as Spring Lake Park cannot afford these turnovers, and they have been, Huskies have made them pay the price. Carter Eklund to kick, and it is good, 35-14. 30, 30, Already more points than Spring Lake Park has given up all year. They gave up 28 in a loss to Moorhead. They defeated St. Francis 14-13 and Park Center 14-13. So when the score gets up too high, it's gonna be tough for the Panthers to come back they lost Rogers last week, 26-13, so 13 or 14 points every week. They put up 14 here in this game. I, I'm confident they'll put up more points, but that gap is going to be very tough. As now a three-score lead for Andover. And turnovers have definitely been the difference in this one. Eklund to kick off. Turnovers and starting field position as this time moving forward with a much better return. Kick is returned by number 44, Colin Welch. It's Colin Welch on the return. Tackle on the play by number 21, Luke Dunley. Number 29, Sam Panthers will start on their own 31 yard line here. There's still time. Uh, so definitely starting with this possession, if they can hang on to the football and get a good drive and score, they're still in this game. So Wilkinson back to throw, rolling out, and ooh, hit as he throws, and lucky that that was not picked off. Wilkinson's pass is knocked down by number 43, Bailey. As Bailey Taylor, Taylor bearing down on him. Bailey Taylor been a defensive stalwart ever since his uh, middle school days. Still terrorizing quarterbacks. So Wilkinson found out there. <laughs> and our student section just gets pelted with candy. I don't know if anybody saw him, saw that coming. Those are hard candies. Someone could lose an eye out there. Got to be careful. So a decent amount of fans came back for football part due from last night to tonight. Obviously, you're not gonna get the same amount of attendance here. Run by number 20, Anders Holland. Tackle made by number Still. 97, Tremaine Davis. Fair amount of fans coming out to support the, their squads here. So short gain on the run, very short. Still be basically third and 10. For the Panthers. They really like to avoid third and long situations, but that's exactly where they are right now. So, different quarterback in right now. Uh, 92, Anthony Sudbeck. So, sophomore, another sophomore quarterback was in on that. Now, he picks up enough to maybe think about going for it, but they do have the punt team on. Fourth and five. And they will punt it away. Smith end over end kick towards the sideline. And that's actually ends up being in Spirley Park's favor as they get it to go out just inside the 30 yard line. Let's go Husky! I know the Panthers didn't want to give it back to the Huskies. But Huskies defense forces them to punt, now taking over on their 30-yard line. Last drive uh, ended with a Davenport 12-yard touchdown run. And the drive before that, Kambagali on a third and long, third and seven, caught a Skinny post, 76 yards to the house on a touchdown reception. So, Spray Park has not answered back 
Andover's last two scores, Andover a chance to widen the lead. There's that swing pass, Lucy out to Davenport. And he's got blockers, and he has got room to go. Miles Thompson trying to run him down to get some angle on him, but cannot bring him down, and he's all the way to the house. Wow, what an unbelievable effort by Demario Davenport. Just ridiculous. I mean, he got some blocks on that play, some very important blocks, but man, he is sponsored by Crisco. Demario is slippery. No one able to do more than lay a hand on him. I don't even know if he would have been tackled in flag football. Boy, it's, it's those types of athletes that, that make you look like offensive geniuses. <laughs> Let me put the points on the board here. 42-14 Huskies as this one quickly turn into a blowout here with the, the three Splinter Park turnovers and then them punting it over and just offense with the big strikes. A 59 yard score, a 76 yard score, and now a 70 yard score. As Davenport just taking that Lucy swing pass, getting blocks, and doing the rest of the work. Colin Welch returns it to the 24-yard line. Wilkinson's back out there. It was uh, Anthony Sudback in for at least one play on uh, the last possession. Wilkinson back under center, and he will pitch to Buren, and oh, shoelace tackle. Number 20, Anders nice play, Caleb Weichel, who's seven. made several plays here today, including fumble recovery. So a loss of three on that play. Bring up second and 13. Pitch to Lamari Brown. Gets a block from Keegan Conkler. And he slithers his way Everybody to the sideline, picking up actually a little 10 He's yards, but not a first down because they were on second and 13. So that is going to set up a third and two. Strangely, they've struggled at this part of the field. They've had two turnovers in this part of the field and uh, had to punt twice and um, the ball is loose again. Looks like Sprintley Park still has it. will bring up fourth down, but almost another turnover there at the same exact spot. The twilight zone here for Sprintley Park, right in this area, right around the 33-yard line. It'll be fourth and two, and the Panthers forced to go for it here, trailing 42-14. Oh, wrapped up in the backfield, and he is not going to get there. Andover defense comes up big. And stopped at the 33-yard line. Will they turn it over on downs? Stopped on the 
claimed by number eight, Ben Peterson, number seven, Caleb Weichel. That's a turtle. Ben Peterson and Caleb Weichel Let's on the stop ball. for Andover, and they will take over once again this. on this Plenty Park 33-yard line. Andover offense will once again go to work. First and 10, Andover at the Spring Lake Park 33, fakes the handoff and throwing swing intended for Wyatt Myers is incomplete. Quad to the left, Davenport in motion. Again, Maynard just keeping this one off the right tackle, and he gets out of bounds close to a first down. Looks to be two yards short, be an eight yard gain on the play. We'll bring up third and two. Davenport given the ball. He'll pick up the first down and more. Run by number nine. Pick up nine Davenport. yards there. Oh. That'll move the chains as they spot the ball at the 18 yard line. Maynard keeps again. He's tackled by Conkler at the 13-yard line. Five-yard gain. And here is Davenport and no one to stop him as he takes it in 13 yards out for the score. Touchdown Huskies! Track meet continues for the Andover Huskies offense. Four straight touchdowns for Andover. Here in this third quarter, it's been a, a uh, nightmarish third quarter for the Panthers. Started off well, they had a long, uh, run from Wilkinson for 50 yards score to make it 21-14, but it's been all and over since. Cambagalli scoring a 76-yard touchdown, and then Davenport, the last three scores, two in the ground, one in the air, and it is now 49-14. I know they suspended uh, several games. The Anoka Coon Rapids game has been... Uh, finished right now along with Blaine Maple Grove. Last I saw Maple Grove was winning 21 to 7. We weren't able to get anybody to uh, to finish that one unfortunately. As kickoff here fielded by Welch outside the 10 and he's got a seam and a pretty good return there but it uh, end up in the twilight zone here as they get to the 32 yard line on the bottom of the 31. so whenever they've gotten past the 33 yard line successfully i think they've uh they've gone ahead and scored but that has been 
a hard barrier to cross with the football. They turned over on downs and had three turnovers from that spot on the field. So handoff this time is gonna be taken past the 33 to the 34 yard line. Run by number 20, Anders Holland. As Anders Holland picks up three yards. Another three-yard run there. This time, Lamari Brown. He's tackled by number 57, Riley Monette. So we'll Let's bring up go, a Huskies. third and four for the Panthers. Wilkinson back to pass. He's throwing his big tight end, this time not able to catch the ball. He had a great grab for a touchdown uh, in the second quarter. But Eagle not able to come down with that one. It will set up fourth down. And the Panthers will be punting here. At least the punt team is on. as Wyatt Myers is set to receive the punt. Smith will drive one, not picked up. It'll be down at the 29 yard line. Punches down by number 22, Teddy Wackman. Huskies punt. Teddy Wackman down in the play, leading uh, tackler for the Panthers and son of uh, Will Wackman, Activities Director at Spring Lake Park, and also one of the assistant coaches still for the football team, former defensive coordinator. Saw him out on the field last night, uh, talking with the officials on what to do with the game delay and resuming the game. The decision came down to move it to today. And still in the third quarter here, this is a quarter that just won't quit. New quarterback in for the Huskies. And that is number 18, Owen Schmitz. He's a junior. So uh, senior quarterback Chase Pemberton has been out. His arm in a sling. I hope we see him again this year, healthy. Uh, getting to watch him fifth through eighth grade slinging the football around for two, 300 yards a game was a lot of fun. And uh, I was hoping to see a lot of him as a senior this year. I hope we see him back. But Maynard uh, stepping in capably, who I believe was a transfer. Powers ahead, and this and end over Husky. Won't tell the story, but my wife is a nurse at Abbott. Actually, actually took care of his grandfather recently. So that was interesting. So yeah, Maynard and uh, quarterback stepped in very capably last week, leading the offense to 63 points and continues to, to do that well enough to be able to leave the game in the third quarter and put on the capable hands of Owen Schmitz. And Schmitz will keep it here as he is tackled by Run Miles by Thompson Schmitz. got Down by number eight, Miles Thompson. a little bit shaken up on the play, but he'll get up. So looks like a full cast change. I don't see any starters out there for Andover. A lot of juniors. Looks like Alec Pelkey is still in its center. I'm going to keep those snaps coming. Center is a little bit of a different beast with 
being in shotgun on pretty much every play. Uh, so keeper again for Schmitz, and he's trying to work his way to the sticks. He'll get four Keep yards, bring up third and two. That might bring us to the end of the third quarter. Tackle made by number 77, Rudy Looks like we'll be content to bring that, have that play bring us to the third, end of the third quarter. And that will be the end of the third quarter. 49-14 Huskies lead. We'll be right back with the fourth quarter here on North Metro TV and QC TV. Flies for Donnelly. Donnelly. Rebels here at home. They could have some home games. Right Titans are scores! <laughs> Touchdowns all to Pasuku. He's got one on the ground. What a great catch. Look at that. Top of the faceoff circle. She sends one low. Save is made. Follow up shot. Score by Max. Whether or not that's. Great look and a goal. A no Through. You can see right there, that's Bernavec with the shot. All right, start of the fourth quarter, third and two. And let me find the button to bring in. Number six, Jason Eaton, number 77, Rudy Here we go. Uh, short of the first down, so fourth and one. They'll keep the offense out there. Head coach Tom DeVell signaling in the play. And the new call. Handoff to the back. Stopped short. And we lost and a head. Will Grant, he stopped short. Tackled by number Will, Gray, Will Grant lost a yard and a helmet. Caden Shaw. Uh, so it'll be down. turnover on downs to Spring Lake Park here. At the 47 yard line. Sperling Park will keep their starting offense in the game. And because the deficit is so great, the clock will continue to run, with the exception of, I think, uh, scores and timeouts. Once I get my clock accurate, I'll run it and hopefully won't have to worry too much about that. We'll can send the pitch to Lamari Brown. Takes it around the left tackle with plenty of space here. And he'll be brought down around the 20 yard line. Number 45, Lamari Brown. He's pushed out of bounds by number four, Charlie Amundsen. Charlie Amundsen on the stop. It looks like we still have at least most of the starting defense still in. Looks like a couple of subs are in. But mainly the starting cast for the end of our defense. Probably make some substitutions as we go. But Spring Lake Park driving now at the 20 yard line of Andover, first and 10, the give. And immediate tackle. I could see the number off. Lamari Brown is stopped short. Either of them looks like Lamari Brown on the carry for four yards. Tyler Phillips on the tackle. Junior linebacker. Looks 
second and six here. Wilkinson, oh, mishandled the pitch and just diving on the ball. Number three, Sam Coles. Will be Sam Coles, senior running back for the Panthers. Pitch was behind him. He just batted it down with his left hand and pounced on it here. Now, loss of three. Back to the 20-yard line will be third and 10. We've seen the third down receiver as the tight end, uh, Eagle. Let's see what the Panthers do here on third and 10. Wilkinson keeps. He'll pick up some yards, but uh, be a five-yard gain. Certainly four-down territory for the Panthers. So it'll be six yards to go for the first down here on fourth down. So scoring here would not change the running clock. So the clock would still continue to run. Well, I guess we'll find out. I forget the number, the magic number to stop the clock. I know the number to start the clock. Here's the pitch to Buren, and he will be tackled short, so we won't have to worry about that as number Andover 20, will take Andrews over on downs. Another short. another turnover, seven. three turnovers, and two turnovers on down for a total of five times change in possession. And Andover with no turnovers. They did have two punts. They have not turned the ball over. They have uh, they have scored on big plays, that is for sure. They won't need any big plays the rest of the way out here. As we will see, second team offense, including center, all the offensive linemen are, are changed out, along with receivers and back. So, other Huskies getting opportunities here. And here is the keeper for Owen Schmidt, and he is going to effort across for an 11-yard gain in the first down. Get the chains moving. Nice run by Schmitz. So it's not it's not a surprise that these Huskies have uh, the offensive prowess that they have scoring. It's a it's an Andover tradition. Uh, B these kids have been putting up numbers all the way through the youth program. Um, so it stands to reason that they Very are doing it at the varsity team level, team and it's fun to see. Uh, also, Tom Develis, offensive guru. And when you have someone like. Eric Johnson on your staff. You know the offense is going to be running on all cylinders. Uh, just the weapons they have from, I mean, your backup quarterback is is Maynard stepping in, and uh, he's an incredible talent, Davenport. I hadn't seen him previous to this year, but that kid is electric and very tough to bring down. Uh, <clears throat> Luke Denicky, Cam Bagali, I mean, Aiden Shaw, so many weapons on this team. And offensive line just needs to open some holes for for zone running and for uh, to pass off the of three-step drop, and they're in business. So <clears throat> third and four now for the Huskies. Up. Oh. There must have been a clock stoppage for five seconds. I'm off now. Schmidt's rolling to his left. He will keep. We'll wrap it up as he's wrapped up at the 28-yard line. Loss of one on the play. Oh, they'll give him the 29, so I'm line of scrimmage be fourth down. I'm sure they'll punt it away here. Luke Denicky will return as punter. I keep on saying, seeing every, every time I watch uh, Andover game on QCTV, 
Joe Rulin mentions that Luke Denneke is 6'5", minimum five times in the broadcast. I don't know if it's because he doubts it. We can measure Luke. We can see how tall he is. 6'5", Luke Denneke back to punt. <clears throat> nice punt and fielded by Welch, and he's wrapped up at the 39-yard line. The 6'5 punter will return to the sidelines. Get a five from Chase Pemberton. Uh, four minutes remaining here. Running clock, and it looks like we will get second team offense here for the Panthers. As we saw him for a play in the third quarter, Anthony Sudbeck, if that is how you pronounce it, that's what I heard. Sophomore quarterback, six foot two. Both the quarterbacks for Spring the Park are sophomores. As a dive in ahead for eight yards, Anders Holland. I saw a Dunbar on the roster for Spring Lake Park. That's another Dunbar of the of Zach Dunbar, former quarterback for the Panthers. Spring Park lost a lot, a great senior class last year. But a lot of young talent on this team. They'll get better as the year goes on and looking into future years. Sudback wrapped up at the line of scrimmage, but twists and turns his way for a first down. It's a nice effort there from him. It'll move the chains. Number 92, Anthony Sudback. He's tackled by number 20, Keegan Evans. Number 22, Hunter Besky. Sudbeck will hand off to Sam Coles. He will pick up five yards. I don't know why every so often the clock stops for like two seconds. Someone's messing with me. We got the nice video and graphics on the scoreboard that uh, I think holds triple digits, which which is what you want if you're the Huskies. And there's a turnover. Looks like fumble, fumble recovery. Recovered by number 46. Uh, 46. <laughs> I don't have them on my roster. I was PA by number 46. Let's go Huskies. That's that's. <laughs> Mysterious 46 on the fumble recovery. That'll just about do it. They probably have to run a play or two, maybe. Uh, I don't think anyone's in a rush here. So the Huskies with this win will improve to four and one on the season. Uh, Spring Lake Park will move to two and three. Next up, for the Huskies, they'll be at St. Francis. It's Spring Lake Park defeated 14-13 on September 8th. For the Panthers, they will be playing for the block at home versus Irondale on October 6th. I am pretty sure Wackman told me that's homecoming. Pretty sure about that. We'll have that as one of our North Metro TV Plus productions. Um, that may well be the last play of this game. One more play. We actually have another quarterback in. And we're back. Oh, Caleb Weichel handling some snaps there. That'll be our last play. So everybody pick up garbage before you leave the stands. This place was a mess when we got here. 49-14 Huskies, the victors in this one. And that will complete football pardu here on a beautiful Saturday, September day. I'm going to go ahead and... 
get rid of this graphic and bring this one in. There's our final score, 49-14. Thank you for watching. Uh, glad we could some way, some form, get the rest of this game on uh, television for you. Uh, watch highlights as well on your respective television programs wherever you live. They'll have that. All right, for Malik Plourd up on camera up top, and for the first part of the production, QCTV uh, last night, I'm Kenton Kipp. Thanks for watching. We'll, we'll see you next time. Bye.